the uh, primary objectives of the test is to look those two new seals that you've discussed and see how they perform. We've got some modified cryogenic loading procedures, which I'll talk a little bit about, and both Jeremy and John will talk some more about that. Uh, we're going to look at the um, core stage uh, and uh, ICPS load. We're going to also get into the start for the engines to see if we can get a good bleed. Uh, get them cooled down properly, and we'll also do the pre-press demonstration to uh, verify our valve timing. Uh, and then we're going to monitor uh, uh, the core stage uh, LH2 tank for uh, for a period of time. The test is uh, is, is objective based, and we're not going to go into terminal count. Uh, and let me just talk about one more thing, and then I'll turn it over to Jeremy to get into more details. You know, we've been um, gone through a number of operations with this vehicle. We're learning more about this vehicle. It's a new machine for us. One of the things I think that we really have a better appreciation for now, which is what we will be demonstrating here on Wednesday, is what the, what we call kinder and gentler loading operations. And they talked about that the last time we got together. Um, for folks who aren't familiar with how this works, LOX is relatively dense. It's about the density of water, and we pump LOX. And so we have big pumps, and they actually LOX uh, is pumped into the vehicle when we do our loading operations. Hydrogen is very light. It's an extremely high-performing um, uh, fuel. In fact, you can't get to the moon in a single launch without hydrogen. That's, that's how uh, it performs. And uh, you don't actually pump hydrogen. You actually use pressure to move hydrogen. We have a pressure sphere sitting at the pad, and we uh, monitor and um, change that pressure uh, for the loading operations to uh, either increase or decrease the flow into the vehicle. We're going to be doing what we call the kinder, gentler kind of loading operations. Jeremy will talk about this a little bit more. We're going to lower that pressure a little bit at the beginning of the chill down procedures and then uh, up through the transition to fast fill. And we think that will really help with the pressure and temperature transitions that the system sees. That's just the one of many different things that we're incorporating in this demonstration to make this a, a robust operation is to really make it uh, have the best uh, possibility for success. And we've looked at a whole bunch of different things, and we're incorporating a whole bunch of different things to in this demonstration that people will get to see. Uh, the last thing I want to add is that we continue to work with the range in a proactive and a very collaborative way, and uh, we're continuing to have technical discussions, and we would anticipate uh, later on after the crown demonstrations uh, that would be we'll hopefully get some more feedback from them and that's all i had i'm going to turn it over to jeremy to kind of get a little bit more to the details of what our uh, kinder and gentler loading operations look like sure thank you tom and uh good morning to everyone and appreciate your interest in our activities um as you know during launch attempt number two we had that qd leak which is a quick disconnect leak um, on the eight inch fill drain line at the tsmu interface the team has really done a fantastic job kind of going through the data, uh, what caused, what they believe kind of what caused and what mitigations we have. We changed out the seals uh, on that QD out at the pad. Um, we've updated procedures and we're now ready to get into our cryo demonstration. Tom mentioned our uh, primary test objectives. So let's maybe kind of start with the big picture. Uh, right now we are tracking no technical concerns to going into Wednesday. Um, so our constraints all look good. Probably the biggest concern that we have is weather, which we are always watching in Florida. As you guys know, it's been a very dynamic uh, couple of weeks for us, um, lightning storms and things like that. But right now, we're looking pretty good for Wednesday. Um, there's about a 15% chance of lightning within five nautical miles. Um, so that actually meets our criteria. So we're going to continue to watch that over the next day or so and, and just make sure that's the case. And it looks even a little bit better earlier in the morning. Um, so just something to really keep an eye on. But right now we are meeting our requirements, and so uh, you know, of course, those forecasts will get better. When uh, when you look at what are kind of the major timelines, so we're actually going to have call to stations for this test today at 1500 or 3 p.m. As we go into it um, at t minus nine hours at about 3:40 Eastern in the morning on uh, Wednesday, we'll begin the BDA clear of all non-essential personnel. About an hour after that or at T minus seven hours, 50 minutes, uh, we get into air to GN2 changeover. Um, after that, we go into a two and a half hour built-in hold. Mm -hmm. We expect the launch director to give us a, cro a go for cryo loading at uh, about 0700 Eastern. The pre-press test to be uh, a couple hours or a few hours later, right, or, right just before 1 p.m. Eastern or at T minus two hours, 18 minutes. 
And then we expect all things to be completed by about 3 p.m. Uh, if all is going well. Um, we do not intend to go uh, into terminal count, or so it'll conclude prior to T minus 10 minutes. Um, when kind of talking about configuration, Orion will be unpowered, boosters will be unpowered. We do intend to load both the core stage and the ICPS, but we will not be doing any FTS testing, COM testing, NAV. So basically really looking primarily at the cryo performance and cryo demonstration. No range will be required during this test. And uh, our number of our test objectives are much simpler there because we're really kind of focusing on that. As Tom talked about kind of the kindler, gentler loading, what we're really doing is we're really trying to minimize both um, pressure spikes and thermal spikes. So our team really thought about how we can go about doing that. Uh, what we are going to be doing is slowly bringing up the pressure on the um, LH2 sphere or the storage tank out at the pad. And so it's going to be a very slow, steady ramp. Uh, we're also controlling the main fuel valve uh, for that fill drain there. And, um, and again, kind of spend some time really thermally conditioning it before we open it all the way. And so the team feels that this helps mitigate some of the risks that we saw, which, you know, um, again, with, with hydrogen in particular, you're talking very, very extreme temperatures. And so really just trying to slowly introduce some of those thermal uh, differences and reduce thermal and pressure shock. Let's see. Um, tomorrow, as we kind of go into this with call to stations this afternoon, we're going to do all our final preps, walk downs, everything like that before we leave the pad, make sure all of our GN2 systems are ready. And um, yeah, I think those are probably the big things that we could talk about and all, all goes well. Uh, we would save the vehicle and then prepare for the launch attempt, but you know, we're really kind of focused on this crowd demonstration right now. I think I was going to turn it over to John.